Hello, this video is about learning how semaphores work. I'm going to use free RTOS as an example, but any operating system, any real-time operating system, the concept is going to be the same. So what I have here in free RTOS is two tasks, and I have called it user1 and user2. And what <clears throat> both of these tasks do is in an infinite loop, they're going to try to access the precious resource. So user 1 wants to access the precious resource, user 2 wants to access precious resource. Now in an embedded system this could be an SPI bus, it could be I squared C bus where only one task can get access at a time because obviously we don't have multiple simulated I squared C or multiple simulations of SBI buses. There's only one hardware bus. So what we're going to do is guard this precious resource with a gatekeeper. And the way we start out is we have to create the gatekeeper. So it's actually XMF4 handle and I'll call it gatekeeper. Now you have declared a variable gatekeeper, but you haven't actually created him. And the way we do so is gatekeeper equals to XMF or create new text. Now we have created a gatekeeper and now before we access the precious resource, we're going to go through the gatekeeper like so. So what we do is go through if xmf4 take the first parameter to xmf4 take is which semaphore so that's my gatekeeper the second parameter is how long are you willing to wait for this gatekeeper to be available or gatekeeper to let you through I'm gonna say one second here So very simple logic where I will print out if I am able to use the resource or not. And I duplicated the logic for the user2 task. So both of these tasks are now going to go through the gatekeeper before they're allowed access to the precious resource. Now free RTOS guarantees you or any semaphore guarantees you that only one task even in a multi-threaded application, only one task is going to be able to go through this if statement. So I've created a bug in this process on purpose. And let's see uh, what bug I actually created. So the logic so far is I go through the gatekeeper. I ask him, can I get access? If so, I will print this message and use the resource. And I will just loop around. So let's run this. And what you will see is user1 got access and from there on after when the user1 went back into the XMI4 take user1 said failed to get access within one second and that's because once we got through the gatekeeper we never told the gatekeeper that we're done so the opposite of XMI4 take is XMI4 give So this is an example where you use a resource after going through the gatekeeper and then you tell the gatekeeper that I'm done. And obviously you have to repeat this logic in the user too. And one other thing I'm going to add here, I will mention that in a little bit later, is a VTAS delay of 1. We'll go through that in just a little bit. So let's run this code and so far I'm spamming my console with user1 get access so let's actually put a higher delay here. And 
and also solve a bug where user2 was also printing user1 messages and let's try it now okay so as you can see now they're taking turns user1 got access or user2 got access he accessed the precious precious resource he gave the semi4 back and immediately after giving the semi4 back user1 was able to get through and get access user1 got done and then user2 got access because user2 loops back around to use the resource again so this is a perfect example of where you are guarding a precious resource whether it's an SPI bus or I squared C bus through a semi four. And the one final comment I wanted to mention is the reason why I added VTAS delay here is because after user one you gets through the gatekeeper, he uses the access, he gives the semi four back. If you don't have a way of this function to let go of the CPU, this function will loop back around and immediately get access again. So that is why I added a delay here. And that's very realistic because in any application, when you use a guarded resource, you'll finish that process and then you'll go on to do something else for a, a little bit before you access the resource again. So this example was particularly about a mutex and please see a follow-up video about a binary semi 